Hey guys, welcome back, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, so we are going to be looking at partial differential equation. And um, before we dive into partial differential equation, let's see the derivation of OD stars ordinary differential equation. So the equation of the form, now given, let's revise our ordinary differential equation. So we know that this is a general form for homogeneous ordinary differential equation, right? This is a general form for homogeneous ordinary differential equation. And to solve um, a general homogeneous ordinary differential equation, we can assume the auxiliary equation to be this. So now this is a standard form for your auxiliary equation for the general form of this ODE. So now the nature of the root of the the solution you are going to get, the type of solution you are going to get when I solve this quadratic equation, now I'm going to be having two values of m. I'm going to be having m1 and m2, right? So now the type of values you get for your m1 and m2 will determine the solution you are going to get for this particular ODE. Now the reason why I'm revising your my the ODE before we dive to PDE because you might be applying this knowledge of OD. So now if M1 and M2 are real and distinct, that means that two different roots, just like two and three, they are not equal, then the, we can the solution of this if, um, ordinary differential equation will be given as this. But if M1 and M2 are real and equal, that means you have two and two, that M1 is equal to two and then M2 is also equal to two. The solution of this ordinary differential equation will be given as this. Now, if M1, for example, M1 and M2 are complex roots, that is, they they have they possess complex numbers, right? So the just like this is the general form for my M that is having um, alpha plus beta, where alpha is my my real number and beta is on this this point here is my imaginary number. Then the solution to the, so the, the solution to my ordinary differential equation will be given as this. So now we, there, is a, there are special conditions for um, solutions, there are special conditions for my ordinary differential equation. Now, for example, look at this. The square y plus the x square plus n square plus y square. Now this is a special form for ordinary differential equation. If you look at it, it's a lot different from this general form for ODE, right? But in this case now, the the term for the y the x has been has been removed, right? So now we're only having the square y plus the x square plus n square. So now, if I decide to solve this using um, auxiliary equation, I'll express this as m square plus n square times one equals zero, right? Which is m square taking m square to the other side, which is m square equals minus n square. And solving this, that's taking the square root of both sides. This is plus or minus the your complex number, and then n. So the solution to this type of ordinary differential equation is given as this. Y is equal to A cos Nx plus B sin Nx. So we also have another special um, condition in which we have a solution D square, in which we have an ordinary differential equation. D square Y plus divided by the X square minus N square Y equals zero. So we express this as your auxiliary equation, which is M square minus N square equals zero. Then taking N square to the other side. So this M is also plus or minus N, right? So now the solution to this particular ordinary dif uh, differential equation will be given as this a exponential nx plus b exponential minus, minus nx or it can be given as this in terms of your hyperbolic functions um, a cosh nx plus b shine nx or it can be given as a shine x plus phi. So now, um, so now having said that, having revised the solutions, possible or possible solutions we can get when we solve a particular ODE. Now, um, let me explain what a partial differential equation is. So, yeah, a partial differential equation is a relationship between a dependent variable u and two or more independent variables. So, first, I would like to explain what a dependent variable is. So, like for example, you have you are having y is equal to two x plus three, right? So now I'm just trying to explain what a dependent variable is. So now, a dependent variable are variables that depends on other values of of other values of function to get their own value. So now, y is depending on x to get its own value. For example, if I put f, if I say let x be equal to one, right? Then y will be equal to five. So you see, y is depending on x for its value. So I call y to be a dependent variable 
and y x since it doesn't it does not depend on any other function to get its own value it's an independent variable so now the relationship between a dependent variable and you know you're not having two or more independent variable for example let me add two z here now this is another variable and this is another variable they are both independent variable then i call i can call this equation this equation can give me a partial differential equation because we're having two independent variable so now this is, this is the relationship between a dependent variable one dependent variable just like a y here and two independent variables just like x and z so now in this case now two independent variables just like x y t etc so you can use any letter to represent your your independent variables so the type of solution that you get when you solve a partial differential equation is going to be the dependent variable in terms of that function just like if, when i solve a partial differential equation I'm going to have something like y is equal to, for example, this is a partial differential equation. Y is, is um, y is a function of 2x plus 3 plus z. This is just like a solution I'll get when I solve a partial differential equation. I'll have a dependent variable as a function of two or more independent variable, just like this. So now, um, um, now we can classify pd based on the, their types right so they are the, um we can classify pd based on so many um based on so many factors right so the ones that we'll be needing um you can classify pd based on their order their linearity homogeneity coefficient type parabolic hyperbolic and elliptic so now i'm going to be explaining how to classify partial differential equation based on their order right so now if you can remember the ODE we, we did, if you can remember ODE or my ODE videos, we did, I explained that the order of a particular ODE is the order of the highest derivative in that equation, right? So that same principle also applies for partial differential equation. So I'm going to be writing it out. So here it is. So it says the order of a PDE is the number corresponding to the highest partial derivative in the equation so now just like what i just said i said the order of a pd is the highest um, the number corresponding to the highest order derivative of that equation for example now look at this uh, um, example now look at this partial differential equation in front of us so now we have two derivatives in question we have the derivative we have derivative of u with respect to x and we also have derivative of u with respect to y. So now if you look at these two derivatives and try to denote the one with the highest order. So the one with the highest order here is this, right? So and the highest order here you are seeing is you are, you are comparing 2 and 1, right? This is order 1 and this is order 2. So the highest order derivative in this equation is 2. That's the number is 2. So I can call this PD to be of second order i can call it a second order pd so i can call this pd a second order pd because the highest order derivative is of order two so now we can also classify pd based on their linearity right how linear are they are they non-linear or are they linear so now let's look at it okay now let's look at the linearity of a particular differential equation how can we say a particular differential equation is either linear or non-linear so now a PDE is one in which a, a, a PD is linear. A PDE is linear in which a dependent variable and its derivative appear to be in an additive combination without the dependent variable multiplying its own derivative. So whether it's an additive combination or, or it is subtracting or is subtracting, this additive combination means they are they are coming together, right? So now um for example I mean, let me explain it again. It's said to be linear if the derivative of the derivative of um, the so the derivative of the independent of the dependent variable is an additive combination with its own derivative. It's with its own derivative, right? And you can also add it add um, the independent variable. Then it's said to be linear. So now let me explain using this equation. I know what I've been saying might sound too confusing to you. So now let me explain using this equation. So now we have this equation in front of us. Say d square u divided by dx square plus du dy plus u is equal to zero. Now I call this to be a linear equation. So how do I say, how do, how do I know it's a linear equation? So now we have the derivative of the dependent variable, right? We also have the another derivative of, of the dependent variable with respect to the independent variable. And remember the additive combination and 
the dependent variable do, you are not see, you are not having a scenario in which the dependent variable is multiplying its own derivative right that means the coefficient of all my derivative must be independent variables so if i have a, a, a scenario in which the coefficients of my derivative are my dependent variable it becomes non-linear so now this right here is a linear equation because you're having the derivative of each of dependent variable and there are no there are no scenarios in which my dependent variable are much just like for example if i put you here now this equation becomes non-linear because my dependent variable is multiplying my derivative but since there is no scenario in which this case or in which for this case then i call this to be a linear equation now look at also look at this example now also look at these two examples in front of us now look at this first one and look at the second one so now what you have in here is the derivative of f as with respect to x and y right this this tells you that f and also we're also having the derivative of f with respect to t so this tells you that f is a function of x y and t so now how can we know that this the um, this equation is non-linear or it is linear so now you're having a derivative of my independent variable function with respect to its independent in, with respect to its independent variable and you're also having a derivative of my independent variable with respect to its own independent variable and there are no scenarios in which f is multiplied its own derivative right or in which the coefficient of my derivative are function of my independent variable then i can call this a linear pd so now but in this case for this for this last equation you can see that my dependent variable f is multiplying its own derivative this is my f and it's multiplying its own derivative d square f over the x square this makes this right here a non-linear pd right so now you can differentiate between a linear and a non-linear pd so now pd can also be classified based on their homogeneity if they are homogeneous if they are homogeneous or non-homogeneous just like my ode so now let's drive down to the homogeneity how to denote homogeneity of a pd so a partial differential equation let's denote if it is homogeneous so a partial a homogeneous pd is one in which every term of that equation depends or involves the independent variable or its derivative or it involves an independent variable and its derivatives so in a, 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 a pd that involves only the, the, the dependent sorry I, I said independent variable the dependent variable and its derivative so a pd that that only involves dependent variables there are no function of independent variable in the question that pd is a homogeneous pd so for example what am i saying so if I, for, for example look at this so we have this the square f over the x square is equal to the f over the t so what does this tell you this tells me that i'm having a dependent variable I'm, I'm having an independent variable x and another independent variable t so we need that f is a function of two independent variables x and t so now that's not what we are trying to say what we are trying to say how can we know this is an this is a homogeneous pd so now you're having a pd of this this is the dependent variable and its derivative this is another depend, another dependent variable and its derivative there are no other terms here in this equation that involves the independent variable if i want to rewrite this i can write this as the square f over the x square minus the f dt equals zero so there are no other um, um, terms in this partial differential equation that involves independent variable so i can call this a homogeneous pd right so this right here is a homogeneous is a homogeneous pd so now how can we know when it is a non-homogeneous PD? Now, if you have terms that involves independent variable aside from the derivative of the dependent variable, then that's the equation is a hom is a homogeneous PD. So now, for example, we're having the dependent variable and its derivative. We're having dependent variable and its derivative. But now we're, we're not having independent variable. This is an independent variable x squared. This is another independent variable than t. That means this equation is non-homogeneous or you can also add it that way that when it is not equal to zero and when it is equal to the function of my independent variable just like this it is equal to zero so it's a non-homogeneous -homo homogeneous pd but when it's not equal to zero and is a function of my independent variable it's a non-homogeneous pd so we can denote a non-homogeneous and homogeneous pd now by saying okay if the pd if the question the equation is equal to zero is a homogeneous pd just like od 
just like ordinary differential equation we did but if it is not equal to if it is a function of my independent variable it is a non-homogeneous pd so now we can also classify um, pd based on the coefficient types right this coefficient type is not much a big deal just to de denote the type of coefficient that is in front of the derivative of there is what it has in front of the derivative in question so if it is a a variable just like for example it is a variable just like an independent variable it is a variable coefficient pd if it is a constant just like three or two it is a constant um pd is a constant coefficient pd so now let me just explain what i'm trying to say so as i was explaining earlier i said we can classify pd based on the coefficient types right so now this is classifying the pd this is classifying the pd based on the type of coefficient they have right so now if you just if you look if you are given a particular um, pd equation and you check the type of coefficient its um derivative is its, its its derivative is having or if the type of coefficient if its its highest derivative is having then you can denote the that pd as um the, the coefficient type as the you can denote pd you can classify pd as based on the coefficient type so we check the the the, the coefficient of the highest order of the highest order um, pd of that equation for example the coefficient here is four right now this is the highest order pd of this equation so we can, can call this a constant coefficient pd but if the coefficient is a variable just like tan x just like what we have here then i can call this a variable coefficient pd this is just a very simple classification so now we go to how to classify pd based on if it's parabolic hyperbolic or elliptic so now this type of classification is mostly common or it mostly involves second order partial differential equation so now it involves second order partial differential equation so now given this form a d square f over the x square plus b d square f over the x dx the x dy plus c and this and this and this and this equal to g so now if b square so now these are the necessary conditions for classifying a particular pd based on parabolic hyperbolic or elliptic so if b square minus 4ac is greater than zero that but that particular second order differential pd is hyperbolic if b square minus 4ac is equal to zero it is parabolic and if b square minus 4ac is less than zero it is elliptic so, so the b square minus 4ac here we are given is this b and this a right and we're having b a and c so when b square is equals to four times a c is equals to is minus that is when b square minus four times a and c that's this a and c are, are the coefficients of this um variable of these equations right they are the coefficients so this b here which is this b minus four times a c is greater than zero it's hyperbolic and if this b square which is the coefficient of the square this, the x dy minus four times a and c these are the derivative of x with respect to x and y is equal to zero is parabolic and b square minus 4ac is less than zero is what elliptic so these are the ways to classify pd based on parabolic hyperbolic and elliptic so this is how to classify pd um these are the various ways to classify pd that we will be needing so our next video we're going to be treating um how to um calculate particular different um, partial differential equation based on direct integration so um, thank you for watching and see you on the next video